satatanushaktam acheshakaya prashrutam achechan autsukya moharati danjaganam yo purva vaidyaya namo stutasmai shri guru pyo namaha hari om As you can see, we are in India. <laughs> this is train station. So, in this third video uh, of uh, the Guru Dakshina series for my Sanskrit teacher, Randasji, uh, we are coming to classical Shadrutus. Now, we are, uh, in this video, we are going to come back a little bit on lunar masses and their importance according to Jyotsha and so on that we spoke in the first video of this series. And uh, if there is a special or better place to start the Rutus, this will continue the second video of this series. And uh, we are going to talk a little bit about Varsha what is usually translated as monsoons and what to do <laughs> and finally uh, after speaking also on the um, the mechanism of the provoked states of vata pitta and kappa we are going to um, put a hypothesis about why there are uh, Shadar uh, Ritus, maybe this has some relates, uh, relation also with the Shadrasas. So, let's uh, start with the lunar masses. The concept of, of month in uh, the solar lunar or lunisolar calendar of um, Hinduism is not the same of the Western one where you have the months from January 1st to January 31 and so on. The lunar months are always relating to the where the, where the moon is being full and uh, in which sidereal, in which stars the moon is taking that position. During the passage of time, and the same problem that happened with the Uttarayana uh, point of view that we discussed in the first video, it also starts to um, come into Ayurveda. For example, there is one star, Agastya, that is related to Arushi, that during the time that Ashtanga Hridaya and the Charaksahita was being composed, written, and so on, in, during that time of the year, the atmosphere was so bright that we could see that star that was not easy to be seen. Bright is not the actual word for that, it's uh, clear. Um, and because this star was not, is not very bright, because this star, the light is feeble, only when the atmosphere is completely clean, you can see that star. And during that time of the year, you should take the water from the ponds and uh, from the lakes, because the sun is giving a lot of its energy to that water, and the moon is also giving a lot of its energy, and the wind is also cleaning the water. So during that time of the year, it said in classical Rituchara that uh, the swans are happy to drink that water because it's really pure. Since nowadays, 23, 24 day, days already has passed of the Ayana and the uh, Ayanansha and so on, things that are from Jyotisha, people still consider that date to be the correct date of that lunar month. If you're a little bit lost with this, you can study about these solar lunar uh, calendars and you'll see that uh, they change every year. So the only place that we have this kind of um, holidays in uh, the West is Eastern. When we have after the, fur, uh, the full moon, the full moon 
um, the Sunday after the full moon or something like this in a specific time of the uh, year you are going to have the Easter so you have the consideration of uh, time a month a solar month and within that you are going to take the uh, lunar uh, state of full moon and then you you say that this is the Sunday that is going to be the Easter but this is the only kind the only one type the only that one survived in this manner of being lunar solid lunar in the West all these holidays of Diwali and so on in India are calculated from the position of the moon to the stars not the position of the sun to the earth so this creates a problem that uh, in India people try to fit the lunar months to Ritucharya and this gives a kind of discrepancy because the lunar months are not uh, related to weather the lunar months are related to the stars and karma and karmic relations that Jyotisha studies. Ayurveda is not related about karma in a deeper manner. Ayurveda is related to Ayu, about uh, handling health. So we should um, keep the importance of the lunar months to the Jyotisha part of the study, but we should not try to put the circle in the square when you're just saying, oh, this is not working, this was not well developed, because the circle of masses, lunar months, are not fitting in the uh, months, the solar months of January or Janavari, if you uh, wish in Hindi. The second part is, is there a, an ideal place to start the Ritucharis? The answer is clearly not. I like to um, start in the Kappa period because in the place where I live the second part of the winter is humid and it's, it's cold and humid but if you go and see Shishira um, description after Hemanta uh, in the classical text it's not so so from my background that I lived in Brazil in Rio de Janeiro there the winter the first part was dry and the second part was cold and then the spring was cold and hot and then oh this is a good time for us to discuss this please take notes for kappa to be provoked we have to have a condition a prior condition that it's cold and humid and quick after this and cold and humid there comes a strong sun this will make the provocation this will make the prakopa of kappa so the um, accumulation accumulation is not a good word for sanchaya from the beginning of the process of kappa we need to have cold and humid together and for the provocation we need to just after that to have hotness and then kappa will start to work in a, a agitated not so easily handled uh, manner and after that if it comes uh, hot that is dry then kappa will subdue it will be the prashama for pitta mainly when it's starting to get hot and it's humid and it's humid and when it's very hot with a lot of humidity you have the starting point the accumulation of pita and then you have the prakopa the provocation of pita and to pita subdue is necessary to be less hot and less humid to be more dry and be more cold and vata it will be mainly accumulating when it starts to get dry the dryness of vata is mostly important and when it's dry and cold kappa will be in a uh, provoked state in a prakopa state but usually the dryness will come first and then the 
coldness plus the dryness will make the vata in a provoked state. After this, humidity, snigda comes along and vata is not so in bad shape, but it's only good when it's what we call spring, when it's hot or not cold and humid. So this mechanism about the evolution of Kappa, Pitta and Vata, it's important that we have in our pockets everywhere in the world. This rule will work everywhere. But how these uh, seasons are going to come, these ritus, they are not going to be the same in the world and they don't need to be the same in the world. Uh, if there is a better place to start, the better place to start is where you have a clear vision of either Kappa, Pitta or Vata being in a very provoked manner. For example, there is one place in Amazonian region where there is two seasons. One is hot and dry and the another one is hot and humid. There is not no hot there. <laughs> so when you're in the hot humid, Pitta is going to be more provoked. When you're in the hot dry, Vata is going to be more provoked. It's not going to be any Kappa really provocation there. So uh, you have to understand your weather and see where is best to start relating to Kappa, Pitta and Vata or Vata, Pitta and Kappa because the Ritucharya is developed so that, as we spoke in the previous video, so that you can understand the evolution of the Vata, Pitta and Kappa or Tridatus or Tridoshas during the year. You should not understand your health pattern on your Pakriti mainly. You should support your health because you understand the flow of sun and moon energies during the years. And now we come to the monsoons or Varsha. I don't know if you have ever been to India, but the monsoons is a time of the year when it rains a lot. Uh, for one, two, three, four, five or six months, depending where you are in India. During the rest of the year, there are not so much rains, uh, mostly, in, in India. So, monsoons, the Varsha in India is called the rainy season. And uh, if you're in the West or if you're in Europe, United States or South America, whatever, maybe this phenomenon doesn't exist. In my country, it, not in my country, in my city where I was born, Rio de Janeiro, there is a famous uh, song by Tom Jobim that says that in March the uh, rains close the summer. São as águas de março fechando o verão é com essa alegria. Bom, so uh, it's a famous song in Portuguese. The point is that in the place where I live, I believe we have two weeks, one month of monsoons. In the sense that after the summer, after it's really hot, it doesn't matter if it's completely dry or not, but it's really hot, there is going to be some water coming from the sky and people will continue to live. <laughs> if there is strong uh, precipitation of water and it's heavily concentrated during uh, showering, uh, process, not just rainy, but strong showering, you can consider that monsoons. And monsoons, it's a very, very problematic part of the year, whenever, wherever it exists, because in the monsoons, the agony is terrible, the bala is not good, and the plasma is not working, the rasa is also not working very good. In Kerala, in South India, uh, it's the time where the Ayurvedic hospitals are completely uh, full because uh, from one point of view a lot of people get sick during this season and from another point of view it's a good time to 
uh, spell out the doshas to do the pancha karma or pancha shodana because the tree get provoked during varsha. This phenomenon of the tree getting uh, vata pitta and kappa getting in a prakopa state maybe only occurs really in India. Outside India, maybe we cannot be so assertive about that. But the point is that uh, when we are talking about the Shad uh, Ritus, we should not translate Varsha as monsoons without knowing the points that are there. We should not translate Grishma as summer without knowing the points of, that are there. For example, in my place, the summer is not completely dry. And the, the Grishma effect that is described in the classics of Ayurveda, it doesn't provoke so much Pitta because it's extremely hot but is also very Ruksha, very dry. If we translate this as summer and we go to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro and apply the Rituchara of Grishma to the Rio de Janeiro summer, it will be a completely mess because in Rio de Janeiro summer, since it's hot and humid, Pitta is highly provoked and we should take care of a lot of Pitta disturbance there. But in India, no. In India, Grishma, Pitta is not being provoked. It's going to be provoked in um, Sharat, what is usually translated as Autumn. So, the main point is, when you use the shadow to scheme, please don't use the English words for that. Because they can be completely misleading. Please uh, take some time to record their names in your mind. Vasanta, Reshma, Varsha, Sharat, Hemanta, Shishira. And see we, what is the specifications of each of these words relating to Vata, Pitta and Kappa, relating to Agni, relating to Bala, relating to the Rasa. So that you can start to understand the place you live and apply those principles to the place that you live. Because the Shadrasas or the Shadrasas are a very good and intelligent way that you can start to understand the weather or where you live. But if you try just to uh, take this from India and apply that in US or Europe or Brazil or whatever, probably it's going to fail. It was not designed for that. Uh, and finally, just one final thought, maybe the Shadow Ritus scheme comes from the place where in India they uh, cognize six essence as flavors. In the West we only have four. It's sweet, salty, uh, sour and um, bitter. bitter. Pungent and astringent are not uh, seen as tastes in the taste buds of the tongues. I know that there is that one that is also in Ajinomoto and whatever, but the point is that in Europe people have four seasons and it's clear the four seasons of winter, uh, spring, summer and uh, autumn. Usually people say that each season has its own colors, has its own flavors, has its own taste. So maybe because in India um, there was six different rituals, six different seasons, six different rhythms, maybe this was a uh, thing that was supporting the idea of Shadrasas because in the classicals there are a lot of discussions in Charak Sanhita if there is uh, uh, one rasa, two rasa, three rasa, four rasa, five rasa, six rasa, or an uh, infinite number of rasas. The point is, we don't need to keep the idea that we have to have six rasas everywhere in the world so you're Ayurvedic. If you're in a place like Amazonian forest 
where you probably only have two or three uh, seasons to Eritus, there is no problem with that. The only thing is that each Eritus has its own balance, has its own code of conduct, and this is the most important point. Okay? So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. This is the third video of this series. Um, there's going to be one more. If you like this and uh, want to know more about our uh, other videos, please subscribe to our channel. And that subscribe and also there is that kind of bell there that you can activate when there are new videos coming. And also if you uh, think that this information is good for anyone that studies Ayurveda or whatever, please share, give your comment. We will be very uh, happy to receive them. Namaste. Om Gurave Namaha.